For the global hazards topic, we need to know a UK hazardous weather case study. Our chosen case study is the UK drought that hit the UK in 2022. A drought is defined as a water shortage over an extended period of time, normally three months or more. The causes of the UK 2022 drought, number one cause was a lack of rainfall. Just two thirds of average fell over much of Britain and only 50% of average in many parts of the southern and eastern parts of the UK. This meant there was a lack of water coming into the system. You can see from this graph here that for six of the first seven months of the year 2022, there was less than average rainfall. From this graph, you can see clearly that south and eastern areas of the UK were the worst hit. Uh, some areas like the southeast receiving barely 10% of average rainfall in July 2022. And what's worse is these are the areas of the UK that are the most highly populated. A second cause was 2022 was an exceptionally hot summer. Uh, it was record breaking, temperatures hit 40 degrees. Not only does this cause more evaporation, and so we lose water through reservoirs through evaporation, but people tend to use more water as well when it's hot, for example, filling up paddling pools or watering the garden. And thirdly, in the UK, we use lots of water, 1.7 billion litres of water a day. And so these causes meant that there was a serious uh, drought in the UK. The consequences can be seen from these two images here. The ground really dried out, including the soil. It was far less green than we would normally expect in the month of August. There were lots of consequences. For example, in Leicester, Bradgate Park had several grass fires. This led to the park being closed on several days. Now, actually, we can develop that a bit further. Now, because of Bradgate Park closing, that meant that people weren't able to go there, so the car park wasn't earning money. People weren't coming to the park, and therefore the local cafes near Bradgate Park were also losing money because their customers weren't coming to the park. And so there was an economic uh, knock-on effect. Because the soil was so dry, uh, the crops just weren't growing as well. In fact, there were even some uh, grass fires and, and crops that caught on fire, caused by sparks when they tried to harvest the crops. The knock-on effect of the farming crisis and the dry soil was that fruit and vegetables were much uh, smaller and looked different because the weather had, had damaged the crops. For example, 50% of potato crops failed and many of the potatoes that survived were far smaller than normal. Now there was a knock-on effect for that. For example, uh, there were concerns in fish and chip shops there wasn't the supply of potatoes needed. This then puts the price up uh, because the fish and chip shop might have to import more costly potatoes from other suppliers and ultimately the cost gets passed to consumers and so we have to pay more for the price of, of goods in supermarkets. Reservoirs were running dangerously low to the point where we actually later had to top up reservoirs by pumping water into them. This is particularly dangerous because reservoirs are what supply our our taps, our water system for our houses. Finally, we need to be able to explain and discuss whether responses to the drought were effective. There are lots of different responses, we'll focus on just a few. The uh, water companies paid for adverts that try to encourage us as consumers to use less water. So for example, they encourage us to have just four minute showers to try and use less water. They gave statistics about the amount of water that appliances use. Now this is probably an effective response because it got consumers thinking about their water use and so your average consumer would use a little bit less than normal. A slightly harder response was 15 million customers were uh, given hose pipe bans. Now, for the customers that obey the ban, this is probably an effective response because that means those customers are not watering their gardens and that's saving water. 
On the other hand, you could argue this is a very difficult thing to police. Even with the threat of £1,000 fines for breaking the ban, it would just take too much police time to be effectively uh, policing if people are following the rule of not using their hose pipes. However, you could argue that most people will want to do the right thing and save water, and so this will have overall helped to save water. One response, as mentioned earlier, was that we had to pump millions of litres of water to refill reservoirs, and so this took a lot of time and money to do. Expert engineers are also were working 24-7 trying to fix around 3,000 leaks a month. Uh, and, and so to save water that way. Now clearly that's an effective response. I guess you could make the point that these leaks should be getting fixed all the time, all year round, not just when a drought is happening. And that way we'd be saving far more water overall in the long run. Lastly, uh, one response was that the farmers union was putting pressure on supermarkets to accept more wonky produce and be more flexible with growers simply because their potatoes and other products weren't growing as well. And the evidence that this was successful was that more uh, wonky products, as say Morrison's calls them, were appearing on the shelves of supermarkets. The downsides, uh, da downside was that the farmers didn't get paid as higher price for these wonky produce. So that's it then. You need to be able to explain the causes, consequences and responses to a UK weather hazard and our chosen weather hazard was the UK drought in 2022.